Brethren, go ahead and begin to worship the Almighty God. If you know that He deserves all the glory, all honor, all adoration, worship Him and adore Him this morning. Give Him all the glory, give Him all honor, give Him all adoration, magnify His holy name. Is mighty, is excellent, is worthy to be praised. Ripa kazonde ke yeri abasunda hali mashinda hayalia. Rika po kazende ke yeri ya. Rima zanda ka yari abosende ke yeri ya. Raka po sote ke yeri abasunda hayalia. Father, we worship you, we adore you. King of glory, we exalt your name, O Lord. There is none like you, O God. Malipo Sota Kalia. You are God from the beginning to the end, O God. You remain unchangeable, Father. Ripa Sota Kalia, Masenta Halia. Worship him and adore him this morning. Give him all glory, give him all honor, give him all adoration. Appreciate God for, the, for, for his faithfulness and his mercies upon your life this morning. I appreciate the Lord Almighty for all that he has done for you. For giving you the grace and the opportunity to be in his presence this morning. It is not by your power nor by your might. Many have died, many have perished. Give God all the praise this morning. I appreciate him, I appreciate him for all that he has done for you. Thank you, our Father. Why don't you commit yourself unto his hands this morning? Say, Lord, I have come, O Lord, Father, into your presence, O Lord. Father, speak to me, O God. Speak your word to me, O God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Father, we worship you, adore you, Lord. Glory and adoration be unto you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Our righteous Father, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Who is like unto thee, our Father, our Savior? Father, Lord, there is none like you, O God. In heaven on earth, underneath the earth, you reign forevermore. We appreciate you for your faithfulness and your mercies upon our lives. We thank you, O Lord, Father, for keeping us alive, O Lord, Father. We thank you because we are among the living today. We are not among the dead. We are not among the sickly. Father, we return our glory back to you. Father, Lord, we say thank you, our Father. Lord, please accept our thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus. King of glory, we have come into your presence, O Lord. Lord, unto you, your word says, shall the garden of your people be. We have gathered, O Lord, Father, to learn at your feet today, O Lord. Lord, come and manifest yourself in the name of Jesus. Glorify yourself in our midst this morning, O God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I decrease, O Lord, Father, so that you might increase, O Lord. Lord, have your word in my life today, O Lord, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Speak through me, Father. And at the end of everything, your name and your name alone shall be glorified. And the blessing shall be ours, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Why don't you welcome your neighbor? Welcome him or her into uh, the service this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. The one who has given us Another opportunity to be in his presence this morning. And I say, may his name forever be glorified. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, we started a, a teaching on the explosive growth drive. Fission 2032. And the essence of this teaching is to promote awareness of the need for aggressive evangelism. Because in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 38, the Bible says, that When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. He says, So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. 
He said he had compassion on them because they were confused. A lot of people out there are confused. A lot of people out there are helpless. The Bible said they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples that the harvest is great, but the workers are few. He said, I, wish, so, I mean, pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. I pray that God Almighty will help each and every one of us to obey his word in the mighty name of Jesus. We must remember and keep remembering that the Lord Jesus Christ has commanded all his followers to go and preach the gospel. It is a command, and we have no excuse than to obey. Vision 2032 is achievable because the harvest of souls is out there, all around us. In our immediate and extended family, we have so many people that have not even given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you doing about it? But it requires people who will not just sit in the church, but go out there and make the disciples. Labor for souls and bring them back into the church for establishment. We have been called. And we were told last week how we can prepare ourselves for the harvest. And four things were mentioned, which are, number one, holiness. If we want to do the work of God, we must be holy. Number two is prayer. Prayer aligns our hearts with God's will and empowers us for the task ahead. So we need prayer. We need the word of God. That is number three. You cannot preach what you don't know. So the Bible says we should let the word of God dwell in us richly. And number four is that you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And today, our topic is workers in the harvest. Workers in the harvest. And when I say workers, workers here are all followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that we are all followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, I will read, if, I will read from a New Living Translation. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. That is our text for today. So now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Verse 12. So their responsibility is to equip God's people. God's people, the saints. And when you talk about the saints, it's all of us, you and I. We are the saints of the Lord. To do his work and build up the church. That is the body of Christ. So this uh, scripture reveals to us how God has equipped and appointed workers for this harvest we are talking about. And the primary purpose of this, of this role is to equip God's saints. And like I said earlier on, the saints includes all of us. And everyone here this morning who trusts in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation is a saint. You are here this morning, you are a saint. You are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are a saint, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 says you are to do the work of the ministry. And this equipping involves teaching them, teaching people. Mentoring them, preparing them to fulfill their individual and collective callings. God is calling on us. And the goal of equipping them is so that they also can do God's work. 
that is the unbelievers that we, I mean, that we ministers to, and they are, I mean, they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives. They too can become workers in his fine yard. They too can do God's work. So every believer has a role to play in the church's uh, mission. We all have a role to play, whether in teaching, whether in hospitality, outreach, or other forms of service. We all have a role to play. And I pray that God Almighty will give each and every one of us the grace to carry out his assignment in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And the aim of equipping the believers is for the edification and the growth of the body of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. The Bible says, but all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, he died for each and every one of us. He died for you, he died for me. He said, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to him, himself. I'm reading from Amplified uh, Fashion. He said, he received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation that by word, by our word, by our deed, we might aim to bring others into harmony with God Almighty. So God Almighty has given us that assignment and the assignment that every believer has been called to do is to reconcile people to God through intentional witnessing of Christ. We must be intentional. We must be intentional. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. says, for I am, that's Apostle Paul, he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And we are ashamed to preach the gospel. He said, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. So for the Jew first and also for the Greek. So for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The Bible says that you should not be ashamed. I mean, Apostle Paul said, I mean, I, for I am not ashamed. We should not be ashamed. Even Luke chapter 9, verse 26 says, If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, he said, The Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy, I mean, holy angels. We must not be ashamed. That is the word of God. We should not be ashamed to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. We should not be ashamed to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like Apostle Paul, every Christian must have this sense of obligation to share the good news. We must have this obligation to share the good news of salvation with others without barriers. And the, I mean, the, the, that saying says, charity begins at home. Just like I said earlier on, how many people are saved in your family? How many people? Many of them are still wallowing in sin. What are we doing about it? Number two is that we must obey the great commission. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We must obey this great commission. We are called to spread the news. We are called to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ to the whole world. To share his love, to share his mercy, to share his presence to all those who are unaware of this reality. Many people are there. 
the last evangelism, I remember me and uh, mommy, we saw someone. I mean, just those uh, girls, I'm not sure they are up to 18. And we said Jesus loved them. She said, how can Jesus love me? When my ex disappointed me. Eh? My ex left me. Praise the name of the Lord. God will help us. I said God will help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. The Bible says, go therefore, make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. God has promised us that he will be with us. All we need to do is to go. To obey. Obey him and go. He is with us and he will continue to be with us. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. He said even to the end of the age, I will be with you. Number three things that we must learn, I mean, from Apostle Paul is that we must not be selfish. With the benefit of salvation we have been enjoying, you have been coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been enjoying the mercies of the Lord, you have been enjoying all these, I mean, blessings, all the benefits. And there are people out there languishing in sin and we are comfortable. May the Lord have mercy on us in the mighty name of Jesus. So let others experience the power of salvation through you. Let them experience it. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 says, Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. So we must be prepared in season and out of season. Whether it is favorable or unfavorable. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Whether it is welcome or unwelcome. You, as preacher of the word, you are to show the people in what way their lives are run. And that's why I said we should correct them. We should rebuke them and encourage them. With great patience. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3 says, Those who led many to righteousness will shine like the stars forevermore. Those who led many to righteousness. Those who witness, I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ to people, who bring people into the kingdom of God, he said they will shine like the stars forever. Are we not happy to hear that? Say they will shine like stars forever. God will give us the understanding in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So we have, I mean, our own responsibility as workers in the harvest. We have our own responsibility. And what are the responsibilities? Number one is faithfulness. Faithfulness. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 says, God who has called you into fellowship with his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. The one who has called you is faithful, so you must be faithful. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 says, It is required as essential and demanded of stewards that one be found faithful and trustworthy. So in carrying out the task entrusted to us by God Almighty, we must be faithful. We must be loyal, especially to our master, the Lord Jesus Christ. We must be faithful. Number two is diligence. Diligence in Christianity Diligence is the effort to do one's part while keeping faith and reliance on God. That is diligence in Christianity. It's the effort to do 
one's part, to do your, uh, your own part while keeping faith and while relying on God Almighty. So diligence is very important for workers in God's harvest field. It is very, very important. Because in the Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, the Bible says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. So as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. So whatever you do in the household of God, do it with all your heart. Do it with all your soul. Do it. You are not doing it unto any man, but you are doing it to God Almighty. And he's the only one that can reward you. Our daddy, daddy, last sister, and mommy, last can only say thank you, God bless you. But the reward is with God Almighty. He's the only one that can reward you. So whatever you, you, I mean, you find doing in the household of God, do it. Do it cheerfully. Do it willingly with all passion. Knowing fully well that you are not doing it unto any man, but you are doing it unto God Almighty. And you will receive your reward. And I pray that you will not, we will not miss our rewards in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three responsibility is consecration. Consecration. Consecration is a significant aspect of our role as workers in God's harvest. Consecrations, consecration involves setting ourselves apart for God's service. Setting yourself apart for God's service, purifying your heart, purifying your mind, your, and your action to be vessels that honor God Almighty. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. It says, in a wealthy home, and I believe our mommies will really understand this. It says, in a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions. Is that right? Mommies, praise the Lord. He said the expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. He said if you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. He said your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. We need to be consecrated. We need to keep ourselves pure. We need to live holy. Live a holy life. And we need to surrender totally to the will of God Almighty. Say, Father, let your will be done. Only your will, O oh God. Then we will become special vessels in his hands. And he will use us to every good work. And so shall it be. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to consecrate ourselves to his service. Number four responsibility is obedience. Obedience. Obedience in the biblical and Christian context refers to the act of willingly submitting to the authority and the will of God as expressed in the teachings and commandments found in the Bible, is doing what the word of God says that you should do. You don't do anything contrary. It simply means hearing or reading the word of God and acting on it. That means you are not just hearers alone, but you are the doers of the word of God. So obedience is doing what God has asked us to do. Obedience in our, I mean, is our way of showing God that we love him. It's the way of showing God, say, Father, I love you. 
We love him when we obey him. First John chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. First John 2, verse 3 to 4 says, and we can be sure, I love the way NLT put it. He said, and we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandment. You can only be sure that you know God if you obey his commandment. Verse 4, he said, if someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, he said, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. If you claim that you know God and you refuse to obey his commandments, you are a liar. I'm not the one saying it. It is the Bible. He says, I love, Lord, I, I, I love you so much. I love you with all my heart. I love you with all my soul. Are you obeying his commandments? Are you obeying him? Verse 5 says, but those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. Those who obey him, who obey his word, truly show how completely they love God. Verse 6 says, that is how we know we are living in him. For you to know that you are living in the Lord, is to obey him. So those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. If we claim that we, I mean, we know God, we love him, we live in him, then we should live our lives as the Lord Jesus Christ did. He is holy. Are you holy? Am I holy? He is righteous. Are you righteous? Am I righteous? He is merciful. Are you merciful? Do you show mercy? He is compassionate. People are dying there. Are you compassionate enough? The souls are perishing. Are you compassionate? He is not a liar. Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even the death of the cross. That is Philippians chapter 2, verse 8b. Obedience. And in John chapter 14, verse 23 to 24a, Jesus replied, say, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Say, my father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. To anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. If you love God, you will obey his word. And Jesus said, him and his father will come to you. And they will, I mean, they will come to your house. They will live with you. That is the word of God. Verse 24 says, anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. If you don't love God, you cannot obey his teaching. You cannot obey his word. I pray that God Almighty will give each and every one of us the spirit of obedience in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, responsibility is tolerance. Tolerance. And the biblical tolerance says, I will share God's truth with others in gentleness and respect. I will share God's truth with others in gentleness and respect. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, say be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. So we must accept one another just as our Lord Jesus Christ accepted us. We must accept others. Tolerance. If you are not patient enough, you cannot preach the word. If you are the type that gets angry easily, it will be hard for you to win souls. Because out there, you will see some people that will provoke you. Even if you are telling some people Jesus love, they will snub you. I think they didn't hear you. 
praise the Lord. Tolerance. In Jesus' uh, interaction with various individuals in the Bible, he was showing love. He was showing compassion without compromising the truth. And even those who may hold different beliefs or lifestyle, he was showing them love. So we must show love to others. We must show love and compassion for others. And I pray that God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number six respons uh, responsibility is love. Love. Love is the very core of our responsibility as workers in God's harvest. Love. First John chapter 4, verse 7 to 12 says, dear friends, let us uh, continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Say, so let us continue to love one another. Why? For love comes from God Almighty. Say, so anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. If you love, you are a child of God, and it means that you know God. Verse 8 says, but anyone who does not love does not know God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. If you don't have that spirit of love, it means that you don't know God. He said, for God is love. Verse 9 says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his only, I mean, his one and only son into the world. So that we might have eternal life through him. Because of the love of God for us, he sent Jesus Christ to die for us. And he came, the one who knew no sin. He died for, uh, for our sins. He said, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Say, dear friends, verse 11. He says, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Because God is love and he loved us so much, we must show love to others. Say, no one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. Say, no one has ever seen God. Or is there anyone here, you have seen God face to face? Have you seen him? But do you love God? Do you love God? If you love God, can I see your hands up? Praise the Lord. We all love God, yes. But do you love your fellow human being? Do you love your friends? The person sitting right beside you, do you love him or her? Deep down inside you. Praise the Lord. We claim to love God. We have not seen God. But the people that you can see around you, do you love them? Until you show love to, that, to those people. That is how you will know that, yes, you really love God. God is love. God will give us that spirit of love. To love one another. If you love your, I mean, your fellow Brethren, I am very sure people that are at home will come because you will have noticed this person is not here and you give a call. We didn't see you. What happened? But you are less concerned. God will have mercy on us. You can't preach to someone you don't love, irrespective of the degree of their sin. So we must love. Love everyone. The Bible says we should even love our enemies. Pray for them. Praise the Lord. Number seven responsibility is discipline and focus. Discipline and focus. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, that's Apostle Paul. He said, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. 
I pray that we will not be disqualified in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. But we need to discipline our body. We need to discipline this flesh. You know, at times you may want to do the spiritual thing that the flesh will be telling you no. If you want to wait on God, you want to fast, and the flesh, even before you wake up, your, the, the, I mean, the, the, your tummy will start telling you some story. Praise the name of the Lord. But any other day that you said, okay, I mean, I mean, you don't want to fast, till the evening, you just, ah, I've not eaten. That is the devil. That is the flesh. So we must not allow the flesh to control us. Put this body under subjection. That is what the word of God says. Whenever you want to do any spiritual thing, tell the body, yes. Or maybe you want to fast. Lay your hands on the tummy. No food for you today. Till so, so, so time. And it will comply. Praise the name of the Lord. God will help us in Jesus' name. Say, so train your body to do what is right. To fast and to pray regularly. So you must seek the face of God in the place of prayer and fasting at all times. That is the way. So I mean, you can put the body into subjection. Matthew 17, 21, verse 21 says, However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. We all want to do exploits for God. Not so. We want to go out there, lay our hands on the sick, and they recover. We want to go to the house. We want to pray for people. Let them get their healing. But how can we do that if the flesh is still in control? We can't. So we must discipline ourselves. And also we must be focused. We must be focused. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 to 27 says, Look straight ahead. And fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from falling, I mean, following evil. That means that we must be focused. And I pray that God will help each and every one of us to discipline ourselves and to be focused. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number eight responsibility is to avoid arguments. As workers in his harvest, we must avoid arguments. Avoid arguments with unbelievers while sharing the gospel. Don't argue with them. Because the Bible tells us in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 to 25, say, again I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fight. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. You will meet them. If you go out for evangelism, you will meet with difficult people. Some even know Bible more than you. So if you don't equip yourself before going out, I don't say more than that. God help us. So a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Gently instruct them. Don't engage in any argument, unnecessary argument. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Number nine responsibility is that is total alertness and readiness at all times. Total alertness and readiness at all times. Being alert and ready at all times as workers in the harvest is crucial for seizing opportunities to share the good news. We must be at alert. You know, at times, someone will just come, your will maybe in your place of work, and the Holy Spirit will ask you to minister to that person. So you must be ready at all times. 
you must be ready and always be on the lookout for opportunities to share the good news. God will give us the grace. Because on our own, we cannot, we can do nothing. We need the help of God, and God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Number 10, that is the last one. Number 10, responsibility is active follow-up. Active follow-up. And we are all guilty in this area. So the end of evangelism is not in preaching to people only, but in making disciples out of them. I remember back home in Nigeria, if you go for evangelism and uh, all this, uh, go out fishing, you must come with your comfort, the name, the address, the phone number, and you begin to follow up. You call them, you encourage them, you send messages to them, messages of encouragement, you pray with them. That is the essence of evangelism. You must win souls and bring his souls to the kingdom of God. So the end is not just preaching to people only, but in making disciples out of them. Because Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, says, therefore, go and make disciples. Don't just tell them. Follow them up. If you minister to someone and the person eventually surrendered uh, his or her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Take the, I mean, the, the person's number, collect the, uh, a name, a address, if the person willingly gives it, collect it, her phone number. From there, you begin to interact with the person. You pray with, with the person. You encourage him or her until he or she is established. The follow-up in evangelism is like tending a garden after planting seeds. It's like tending a garden after planting uh, seed by nurturing and guiding new believers. You nurture them. You guide them. You pray for them. So that you help them to grow into mature followers of Christ. That is the essence of follow-up. Until they are mature. And I pray that God Almighty will give us the grace to go out there and preach the gospel in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Every spirit of disobedience in our lives, God will take it away in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, as workers in the harvest, we are called to be co-laborers with our Lord Jesus Christ. We are co-laborers with our Lord Jesus Christ. Our roles may vary, but our mission remains the same. And the mission is to proclaim the good news of salvation and make disciples of all nations. So God is seeking genuine and committed laborers. Say the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. God is seeking genuine and committed laborers who will reach out to these people we are talking about. They are out there. And bring them into the fold. And I'm asking each and every one of us this morning, will you be an answer to Jesus' calling this morning? Will you be an answer? So you must remember that only the saved can save the others. And if you are here, you have not even given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you going to tell people out there? So it is time for you now to surrender your life to him so that you'll be able to do the work. So if you are here this morning, you have not surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not accepted him into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. This is the time for you. Can I see your hands up? Thank God. We are all born again. Glory be to God. I want us to be on our feet. I know we have some people in our midst this morning. 
You have the burden to win souls. But you are afraid. Afraid of what to say. You don't have the boldness. And you are telling yourself, oh, sorry, I wish I can win souls. But you are afraid. If you are in that category, can you just come forward so that our mommy will pray for you? You have the desire to go out there, but you are afraid. You are afraid. You don't have the boldness. You say, what am I going to say? Just come out. Come out. God will help us. God is in the house. You are welcome, my sister. Do you have any other prophecy? You really want to go out to win souls. And that is the great commission God Almighty has given to each and every one of us. To go out there, preach the gospel. But you are here. How I wish I want to win souls. But what am I going to say? I don't even speak good English. But the Holy Spirit can work, can do that, that work. All you need is to just commit yourself to the hands of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up. And before you know it, do we have another person? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Mommy, please, can you pray for us? Amen. Amen. Let's stretch our hands to this Please Holy Daughter. Let her boldly come out. Let us tell the Lord that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he who did it for Peter will do it for her. Let us ask God to fill her with, with his spirit in the name of Jesus. She desired this, and the Bible said, Whatsoever we ask of him, he will do unto us. Our daughter today is saying she wants to go for the Lord. That the Lord will fill her up to the glory of his name in the name of Jesus. Let us pray for her. Let us pray for her. As a church, let us commit her to the heavens of God. That she will go and she will, she will preach the gospel. And will come back glorifying God like the apostles of old did. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God of heaven and earth. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father and our Lord, we come together today as a church. We are asking, Lord, you said you have sent us. And this, your daughter has come out, Lord, to say, I want to really obey. But my, 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 my challenge is the boldness. She did it for Peter. Father, we come together today in one agreement that you will do it for our Lord Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We decree the spirit of the Lord to fill you from now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Peter that was able to win hundreds, thousands to the Lord, we help you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anytime you open your mouth, the Lord will fill your mouth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Because, Lord God of heaven and I, we know that very soon we soon have testimonies concerning this particular daughter of yours in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord God of heaven and I, because she will not be tired in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for you that it's going to be forward ever and backward never. Amen. You will finish well, you will finish strong Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Blessed be thy name forevermore. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, sister. God bless you. Now, please, we are going to pray. We are going to pray to God Almighty that anything that is distract, uh, distracting us from winning souls for the kingdom, that God should take it away. Go to God right now. Say, Father. Say, Father. Father. Anything that is distracting me from winning souls for the kingdom. Father, take it away from me, O oh God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, every distraction, O oh Lord, Father, 
Baba, take it away from our lives in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. King of glory, Lord, anything that is distracting me, O oh Lord, from winning souls, O oh Lord, Father, for the kingdom, Baba, Lord, take it away, O oh Lord. Take it away from me, O oh God. Take it away from us as a church in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. King of glory, Lord, we pray that you help us, O oh God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Masita Kalibo Sota Halia, anything that is distracting us, O oh Lord, from winning souls, O Lord. Father, take it away from our lives. Take it away, O Lord, Father. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You cannot help yourself. Why don't you cry to God Almighty this morning? Say, Father, help me, O Lord. Help me, O Lord. I want to win souls for you, O God. Help me, my Father. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. You are the help of the helpless. I need you, Father. Help me, O Lord. Give me the grace, O Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Give me the grace. Give me the boldness, oh Lord, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Masuta Kali Masete Heyelia. Ripa Suta Kali Mazunda Halia. Why don't you come again? That spirit of disobedience. That spirit that is telling you not to obey the word of God. Command that spirit to get out of your life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Begin to renounce that spirit right now. Begin to renounce it. Do you that spirit? You that spirit of disobedience in my life. I renounce you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I reject you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, from now on, Lord, I'll begin to obey you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have commanded me to go, O Lord, and make the disciple. I receive that grace this afternoon, O Lord. I receive the power, O Lord. I receive the promise of God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Malipo Sita Kayaraba, Rida Boko Zendeke Yiria Masita Kayalia, Jehovah Lord. I, I will pay you, Lord. Give me the grace, O oh Lord, to pay your word. Give me the grace, O oh God, to pay your word. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, help me, Father. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father, for you to do this work. The Bible said you must put the body under subjection. Why don't you pray? Say, Father, give me the grace, O oh Lord, to put my body under subjection. Of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, O Lord. Masita Kalibo Sota Kayaria, Lima Sota Yaria. I want you to lay your hands upon your head and begin to tell yourself, Say, All my life, you will obey the word of God. You will do the will of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Masuta Kayaribo Sina Kayaria. I speak to you, my life. You will obey the word of God. You will do the will of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Savior. Glory and adoration be unto your Father. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. Daddy, we return our glory back to you, O oh Lord. We thank you for sending your word to us this hour, O oh God. Lord, we have cried our heart unto you, Father, that we need your help, O oh God. Father, please help us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we come against every spirit of distraction, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, every spirit of disobedience, everything that is telling us not to obey your word. Father, we, 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 we disassociate ourselves from it, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. We receive the power, we receive the boldness, O oh Lord, to do your work, O oh God, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive the grace, O oh God, to go out there, O oh Lord, and preach the gospel, Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We pray, O oh Lord, Father, that the word we've had today, O oh Lord, will not stand against us on the judgment day. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, help us, Father, to be doers of your word. Thank you, our Father and our Savior. Glory, honor, adoration be unto you, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.